And right now, though, Howard Cox is here uh, from Fair Fuel UK, but today wearing a new hat. Howard, a very good afternoon to you. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm very well indeed. I understand you've got some news for us. Yes, it's today I officially announced my candidacy for the London Mayor. Fantastic. Now, um, that wouldn't be uh, Sadiq Khan by any chance you're going to be fighting against. <laughs> oh, that, that very honest, you know, democratic you know, uh, politician. London's yes. most popular man. I mean, you, <laughs> you won't have to look far to get a lot of support, I wouldn't have thought, would you? No, I mean, it's incredible. I announced it last night. The Sun and the Telegraph went with an exclusive yes, la uh, last night. And just in, in, in 10, 12 hours, I've had something like 6,000 emails, loads of Twitter uh, likes, etc., all wishing me luck and uh, saying, let's get rid of this man. We need to ditch him as soon as possible. Yeah, and obviously you're coming at this from the ULES perspective. You've got taxi drivers in full support of you. Uh, I imagine you'll get an awful lot of Londoners who, uh, who need to drive for a living supporting you as well. Tell us what your plan would be. Well, obviously, we're going to ditch uh, or scrap the whole of ULES, not just the extension. That, and that's the uh, clear blue water in between uh, me and the Tories. Uh, we want to get rid of the whole of ULES. We want to cut crime and, above all, ditch calm because he is causing so much damage and he's wrecking uh, the UK economy, uh, the, the London economy. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I, I produced a report only last week, and I think you may have picked it up, is that £800 million pounds a year uh, is the ULES is costing uh, the GDP of London. He's wrecking the economy, and not just only in terms of actually congestion and strangling our streets, he's wrecking the economy. Yeah, and it's not just the London economy. I mean, you, you, you make a good point, but equally, there are people who now don't come to London from elsewhere in the, in the country because either, one, they can't afford it, two, they don't want to get hit by a congestion charge or another charge they don't fully understand. Because the thing about you, Les, is that nobody really gets it. You know, we talk about it all the time. You and I understand what it is. But most ordinary people with cars don't really know whether they have to pay it or not. Well, it's also a regressive tax. It's small income or low income families. It hits uh, the electrician, the plumbers. I got an, uh, an email only last night from a guy that's saying he can't afford to come. He's using an Uber to come in to bring right. his, his carpenter, to bring his tools to do the work he's doing because he can't afford to pay the yeah. 12.50. And I said, what about the Uber? He said, the Uber is only six pounds. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, this is what Sadiq Khan wants. He wants people traveling around on the underground with ladders and all sorts of things, isn't he? Knocking people over and them, knocking them under trains. It'd be great. Brilliant. Um, what about the, uh, the situation regarding things like the congestion charge? Because the congestion charge, again, for a lot of people, they don't know how to pay it. If they're strangers to the city, there's no signs anymore that tell them how to do that. Um, are they going to be, uh, are you going to have any plans to either reduce that or, or make the hours different, anything like that? We've got to look at the congestion charge because I'm, I, 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 I understand with all the stats I've been given, the congestion charge has reduced congestion, so that's a good thing. Really? But I want to look at make sure. Yes, I, I think we could make, make sure that, that is the truth. If it isn't the truth, I'm sorry, it's going to go as well. Well, I can tell you it's not the truth because I come into the congestion charge zone pretty much every day um, and the traffic is as bad as it's ever been. No, Sometimes that's a good worse. point. You know, yeah, I'll, be more, think... I'll be more than happy to supply you with some uh, up to date data should you wish for it. <laughs> I, I can always rely on you, Mike. But don't forget, there's a little matter of the cycle lanes and the LTNs. Oh. Well, this is, the other, this, is, this is the other problem. The cycle lanes, we've got the, the scooter brigade, we've got all the mopeds, people driving around, many of them working illegally. I mean, you know, it's an absolute menace driving on the roads in London now because you're so busy trying to avoid hitting anyone. I um, mean, I was just yesterday, right, um, I was driving back home and I was one of these kids on one of those um, Lime electric bikes, which go at a fair rate of knots, right? And this guy was determined to, to undertake me on the inside, which is really dangerous for a start. Um, so we pulled, we, as I was coming up towards the traffic light, there was a white van in front of me stopped. He was about to turn right, if you can imagine the scene. This guy tries to come up on the inside, so I sort of slightly made my car occupy the left uh, closest to the, right. to the curb, okay. right? So he comes swinging around me to the right, thinking he could just go round me, right? At the same time, the guy in front of me turns right, slams straight into the van. And you just think, you know, uh, what an idiot. Unbelievable. And, I mean, he wasn't hurt, so I'm not, taking, not making fun oh. of that. But, I mean, it shows you what happens on a daily basis in London. It's mayhem out there. Well, that's one thing. I, I want to get London moving again, in both economically and on the roads and that sort of thing. I also want to put more bobbies on the beat. Yes. And I want to put more social housing. So it's, I'm, I'm not a one-trick pony in this case. I've taken a lot of... My wife and I sat down for the last month to actually... Um, as you know, Richard Tice, leader of Reform UK, I'm standing for. Yeah. He, I mean, the bad a, news for you, Howard, is you have to spend quite a bit of time with Tice now. I mean, that's the trouble, you know. But it's, <laughs> it's good news well, for the rest of us. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me just show you the, my campaigning car. Yes. Oh, yes. I like the look of that. Very nice. There Reform blue. Yeah, look. Do you like it, Mike? I do. Very good. Yeah. I, I've got Sir Mr. Tice next to me here. Come on, Richard. Come and meet Mike. <laughs> Now, Richard Tyson. Hello, Mike. How Hello. are you, sir? Look I, at this. I'm very well Great indeed. Very what do you well. think of our marvellous taxi? I, lo I, I, I love it. I'd like, I'd like to see a whole fleet of them, actually. And um, <laughs> I, you've got... Uh, Mr Tice has got a, 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 a name for spotting talent, so he spotted yet another talent to run London. <laughs> I can't wait for the election now. It's something to look forward to. Well, it's 12 months away. We've got a lot of hard work, but I tell you what, we can get London moving with Howard Cox. Excellent. Um, have you got any powers over the Just Stop Oil Brigade? Can you can you make sure that the police <laughs> lift them off the streets whenever they sit down? Watch this space, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, listen, congratulations and well done Thank indeed. You. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of you. Richard Tice, of course, will be back here with me on Friday morning. Um, the Reform Party have now got their own mayoral candidate. Uh, he's going to take on Sadiq Khan. Couldn't be a better man for the job because he knows an awful lot about all things to do with the congestion charge, the ULEZ, but not just that, uh, putting more bobbies on the beat as well. So we'll hear more, I'm sure, uh, from Howard Cox.